What's up, everybody? Kevin here, a.k.a. The Fantasy Football Geek. I am the commander, CEO, founder, and lead NFL analyst for DFSArmy.com. And what I wanted to do today, and today being August 18th, three weeks before the start of the regular season, is do a little video to go over the process that I use to create mass multi-entry lineups on FanDuel and DraftKings. When I say mass multi-entry, I'm talking about attacking a 150 entry max contest. Um, this year is really exciting in the sense that both FanDuel and DraftKings have released those types of contests for all budget ranges. So we know how much we hate. Everybody talks about, oh, people who do mass multi-entry, they're horrible and they don't have any skill. Okay, prove it. You've got mass multi-entry contests. Costs a quarter per entry, thirty-seven fifty on on um, FanDuel to max it out. Show me, show me you're so good. I'm going to teach you how to do it. We're going to give you the tools in DFS Army to do this, but not just running 150 random lineups. We're going to build 150 fully correlated stacked lineups. And just wait until you see all the tools we have coming for this season. I can't really quite show them now, but we'll have correlations nailed. All the way down to the specific numbers on a specific game but for now we're going to use some of the basic correlations that we know um, that other people use that we've had all the time to set up this um, distribution so let's start with the basics uh, we start by choosing which site we want to work with we've got FanDuel we've got DraftKings whatever you want you choose it NFL I'm gonna choose your site We're going to go with DraftKings on the main slate for the purpose of this demo. And I'm just going to kind of go through a little bit of the basics of the optimizer and how it works. So the first thing you see once you select your slate are the game filter. Normally these will all be filled out with game totals. You have your spreads in there. Totals, for whatever reason, we're not picking up just yet. It's early in the off season. Um, I do know there are game totals, but um, our data service hasn't quite fed them in. So these will be filled out. They'll all have nice little shading based on the game totals, and you can look and see which ones are projected high and which ones are projected low. Next screen, you have your basics. Here's your position filter. As you're looking at the player list below, you can choose which position you want to be looking at, or you can look at them all. This is a salary range. This will remove players based on this range. So let's say I don't want any super expensive studs in my lineup I'll just lower that and they will disappear see no more Le'Veon Bell why would you ever do such a crazy thing so um, more importantly I think for the purposes of NFL is the fantasy points range filter this is actually really useful and I'll show you in a minute how I use that actually I'll show you right now so real quick you know part of what we're doing is narrowing down the player pool that's how you have to do it for 150 we want to get a nice spread narrow down the pool so as I'm looking at the starting Quarterback pool, I mean, I don't need these guys who are backups. Who, for some reason, are getting a projection. Or like Baker Mayfield, who's, you know, we don't know. He might play. How do you know? Right? So um, we want to pull some of these backup players out. So we're going to set the, I'm going to set the minimum fantasy points range. I'm going to set about, let's say, th four. I don't want any players at any position projected below four points. Not in football. So we just got rid of all the garbage, or most of it. Still have some situations where they're not sure if a guy's going to be a starter. I'm going to uncheck the rest of the guys that I wouldn't want to use in week one. All right, so got our setting started. Salary cap total. This is um, also a measure I don't really use in NFL. This will reduce or... or the salary cap to try to force it not to use the full 50,000. The reason people want to do this is for uniqueness. Figuring most people try to fill out the salary cap. I do not believe in doing that for NFL because NFL is not a sport which produces the nuts or perfect lineup on a week to week basis outside of maybe in the two game slates where I do think there is at least some value to it. Um, as far as avoiding ties, but that's really on a very short two-game slate type scenario. And here we go. We're going to set the number of lineups. We're going to be running 150 today, the full max. 
uh, value. All right, so very quickly with some of these um, some of these items over here, optimal mode, tournament mode. When I run 150, I always run it in tournament mode. Tournament mode is a setting that we've created that works with your max exposure settings exclusively, which will keep any players with a lower than 100% match exposure setting from showing up together with one another constantly. Um, I've explained that in other videos. Go look at that if you need to understand it better. Look for the um, tournament mode explained tutorial that we have on DFSArmy.com under general strategies. Okay, now normally we want to use DFS Army points as our projection. That is the, that is the default. Those are our DFS Army custom projections, but since it is three weeks ahead of the start of the NFL season, we can't do that because we don't have projections yet. We're not going to put out projections three and a half, four weeks before the season starts. So we go to base projections, which are um, the projections provided by our data provider. You know, you see these kind of projections in a lot of other places. They're not custom or unique. They're kind of base. Uh, I call them canned projections. They're fine. I like to look at where ours differ from those base projections. That's always interesting for me. And the number of uniques in N for NFL on a full slate, two or three uniques is great. Uniques is a measure of how many unique players show up between one lineup to the next. And if we're doing heavily stacked, I might actually just go two. And we are going to do heavily stacked because that's really the feature that I want to show the most. And finally, um, the measure of how many players to allow versus the fantasy defense that you chose. Um, I always set this at zero outside of, again, two game slates where sometimes actually allowing players versus your defense is fine. But when we have all of these games to choose from, uh, we're not going to do that. I'm going to briefly look at all the position groups just to make sure that we like them. All right, so one of the first places that I start are the stacks. And then we start with the quarterback position. We, what we want to do is start to figure out how much of each quarterback do we want exposure to. It's as simple as that. Every lineup starts with a quarterback um, for mass multi-entry, and generally it starts with some sort of quarterback or game stack. So I just go through the list, and first I start to eliminate anyone I'm really not going to use, or I start to set max exposure settings. Like, all right, Sam Bradford, Case Keenum. I talked about him in the quarterback video yesterday, for example. Like, I'm not going to use these guys. So let's let's get rid of Josh Allen. Let's get rid of Baker Mayfield. Let's get rid of Josh Rosen. I don't even know if these guys are playing. I'm not going to be playing Eli Manning week one uh, against the Giants. I'm just not crazy about that matchup. Um, we have to make decisions. Tyrod Taylor, more of a cash game play for me. Not somebody I want to focus my tournament lineups around. Blake Bortles, not a guy I'm super excited about. Definitely don't like Dak. I do like Alex Smitty. A couple of these guys in good spots. I'm going to leave them in. Russell Wilson at Denver. We're going to, I'm going to take him out. Rivers I like. I like. Roethlisberger, not too much exposure. Don't want a ton of him. Don't want a ton. Um, Cam Newton, okay. couple shares, couple shares. Not going to go crazy. All right, so we're going to start to set this up. Now, as I said in my video yesterday, I'm not super excited about Tom Brady, most expensive guy on the slate. Um, I like getting exposure to this game through Deshaun Watson, but we'll leave Brady in there for, let's say, 5%. We want to set the max exposures. Actually, generally, the first thing I do is I start by just running the tool. I just like to see what the projections are doing initially. So we're just going to run it. No special settings. Nothing crazy. Just kind of get a sense of if we didn't change anything from here, what would it be all over? Now, this is an involved process. We've got to set our exposures to our defenses. We got to set our exposures to our our uh, various positions. Everything has to be controlled. This is not something that you're going to accomplish in 
10 minutes or five minutes, or you're certainly not going to accomplish it and do a good job. Um, so we want to control our running back exposures. Everything needs to be controlled. And most important, we're going to set up our quarterback stack. So all of these things are important to do. And I want to, I want to jump over real quick to, you know, let's lower this so that for the purpose of these examples that we're not waiting all day, we're going to lower that to 50 lineups just to be sure. All right. So I'm going to show you some of the quick options. Um, team stack. This is basically just a setting. where you can control how many players um, for a particular team will show up in any particular lineup. I usually use the at most and you know I don't normally want more than four players from any team. You can just set up these rules if you want. Most of the time they're not going to show up that way anyway. Sometimes you do want to allow again game stacks, shorter slates, but in a big slate like this it's pretty unusual that you can get so more than four fantasy relevant players from a particular team. So you could just kind of go through this and pretty much it's unlikely that that will happen anyway. So it's not really a setting we need to go crazy with. Like I said, I use these, this setting for much smaller slates. More importantly though, is going to be our position stacks. And now most tools that allow for stacking, which is not all, will say, Stack quarterback with no, you know, um, a number of positions. So WR1 from the same team. Okay. How many? No less than one wide receiver from the same team. General generic rule. Every quarterback will be with at least one wide receiver from his team. Um, and that, that was a sim simple method. I'm not crazy about that method because it has very little uniqueness. It has very little customization. You know, it's a generic term. And we're now, now if we ran it like that, every quarterback would have a QB um, WR stack. So you'll see, here we go. All these Jimmy, all these Jimmy Garoppolo lineups, you're going to start to see Marquise Goodwin in every lineup. There we go. It's putting him in there with Marquise Goodwin every single lineup. You know, for whatever reason, the projections love Garoppolo's value week one. So that's how it's it's working out. And because of that, it's pairing up with, with Goodwin in every single lineup. We don't like to use generic um, generic things, right? So rather than that, I'm going to go direct. All right, first of all, we're using Jimmy Garoppolo. So let's say stack quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo with no less than one of, well, let's do a two-team stack. And instead of instead of um, going by player, I'm going to say, with no less than one of Marquise Goodwin, or Pierre Garçon, or Jarek McKinnon. Why? McKinnon's a pass-catching running back. What if I want a... There we go. We can make that rule. Now, let's say I want to use Jimmy Garoppolo in game stacks. I'm going to go one of. All right, let's look at who they're facing. Well, we know they're facing the Vikings week one. So we've got Adam Thielen or Stefan Diggs. We have stats that show that a quarterback has direct correlation to the opposing WR1. Generally that's because if the opposing team is putting up points, we can even we can even throw in Dalvin Cook in this measure. And the idea being if the other team is doing a lot of scoring, then uh, the quarterback's team will have to play catch up. He's gonna have to throw more. There's some correlation there. But in general we want player correlation. Now check it out. Let's run this again. Now all the if we have Jimmy Garoppolo, see Garoppolo's dropping off. And well, why is that happening? The reason is because we've now taken the Garoppolo stack and added so many parameters to it with other players 
that it's no longer the most optimal stack because the more parameters we put in, as far as projections go, the less optimal each stack is going to. That works with everything. The more parameters you give a tool to work with, the lower the total projection is going to be. And you might say, well, why, the, why would I do that? That's crazy. I want the highest total projection. Well, if that's what you think you're doing DFS wrong, it's not about the total number of fantasy points here. It's about building correlated lineups so that if the one given that we know, we're using Jimmy Garoppolo in our tournament lineup, right? That's our given. What's the given in a GPP? I don't win unless my player kicks ass, okay? Especially my studs. You will not win your tournament unless the studs in your lineup crush it. So we know that if we use Jimmy Garoppolo as our quarterback and he has a shitty game, we ain't winning the tournament anyway. We know if we play Jimmy Garoppolo and he's having an amazing game, there's a good chance that Marquise Goodwin or Pierre Garçon or Jarek McKinnon are also having a good game and maybe more than one of them. We can control this. There's also a good chance, based on correlations, that player from the opposing team, Thielen, Diggs, Dalvin Cook, are having a good game. So now you're saying, well, I set up a Jimmy Garoppolo stack. How come he's not showing up in your lineups? Just because you set up a stack doesn't mean that player is going to show up. So the next move, we can set a minimum to Jimmy Garoppolo, and he'll just show up in 20% of lineups. That's not how I normally do it. When what you'll see as I continue to do these with a few different quarter, quarterbacks that th this that won't be necessary because we're going to remove the options and set limits and control it all. But you know this is just for the purpose of this exercise. All right, Jimmy's in most of them. I'm just going to pause it, find some Jimmy lineups. They're going to be towards the bottom because again those there's so many parameters in play here that it's actually going to have lower. Fantasy points totals, which will push these to the bottom of this list, which is ordered by fantasy points. And obviously, when you have that order, the less restrictions you put, the higher the fantasy points will show on the screen. But if you look at some of these lineups, what do we have? Game stacks. Garoppolo. Cook. Goodwin. McKinnon. One, two, three, four. That's a beautiful game stack. That's how you win the tournament. Game stack. This game goes off. Right, everybody's talking about New England versus Houston. Everybody's talking about the Saints at home. But the Vikings San Francisco under the radar game goes off and you've got it game stacked. If that game goes off, you have a good chance that this lineup will, you know, have a shot. Right? Garcon and Goodwin. Now what well, only one went off, two went off, doesn't matter. McKinnon, somebody if if Garoppolo's having a big day. There's a good chance that two of his position players also had a good day. We don't know if it's going to be Goodwin, uh, uh, McKinnon, Good, uh, Garcon and Goodwin together. Maybe it's Greg Kittle. I'm going to add him in the mix. It's my boy Greg Kittle. That's the point. All right, so we did one. That's, that's one quarterback. Boom. Now, I don't like to use min minimum exposure setting, so... Rather than that, I'm going to show you a little bit more of how I how I how I'm going to work this. Go back to the quarterback position. Where was uh, Jimmy G, my boy? Okay, take that out. Rather than do that, what I'm going to do is start pulling players from the pool that I don't want to use. Let's say I don't want to use Brady. No Cam. I'm going to use Breeze. Definitely going to use Deshaun Watson. I'm going to pull Ben Roethlisberger on the road. I like I like him. I'm going to use some of that. Uh, let's pull, let's pull, uh, damn, I like all these guys week one. Pull Tannehill, pull Bradford, pull Flacco. All right, so how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We've got eleven quarterbacks. I'm going to start setting max exposures for some of these guys, right? So let's do 10% Drew Brees, no more than. I'm going to go 15% to Sean Watson, no more than. I'm going to go, I don't know, 10% Cousins, 10% Rivers, 5% Mariota. I mean, this is a lot. Really probably too many for the purpose of this um, demonstration. 
you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shorten up this pool just to make this a little bit easier um, to show because we have, if we have too many in here, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, let's go with six. We'll go 20% Garoppolo. These are max numbers. Thirty, forty, we'll go twenty percent breeze, and we will leave Sean Watson at one hundred percent. You normally have to leave one player at one hundred percent. Let me just make sure if that was enough. Yeah, you always have to leave you have to leave enough for for the tool to work. Okay, so we're running lineups. I left Case Keenum at 100% in there, too. There we go. Now we're going to start to set our stacks. We did a crazy stack for Jimmy Garoppolo. Let's see who else we have. Okay, we've got Drew Brees, so let's let's set up Drew Brees, right? What are we doing with, with Brees? No less than one. Okay. Brees, we're going to pair up with Kamara. Michael Thomas. That's all of his weapons. So we're going to add that one rule in for Breeze. Sometimes I'll do double stacks. No less than two of Kamara and Michael Thomas. Now let's say we want a game stack. I don't really want a game stack this one. This is a game in which New Orleans is heavily favored. Yeah. So we don't want to really game stack that. Tampa Bay's rolling out. The backup quarterback for week one. It looks like they're going to take an ass whooping. Um, so for each quarterback stack, we want to set up some sort of parameter for that specific quarterback. What, who do we have? Deshaun Watson. All right, Deshaun Watson's a fun one. You know, this is definitely a situation where we want to double or even triple stack. So I'm going to go crazy with this one. And let's go the Sean Watson with Hopkins, Fuller, Hogan. And why am I doing Chris Hogan? Because if the Texans are scoring heavily, there's a good chance that this is a back and forth game between them and the Patriots. I'll even throw, I'll even throw, actually the way I like to do it is one team at a time. We're going to do no less than one of these two, add rule, and then we're going to do no less than one of, let's call it Burkhead and Hogan. Add that rule. Let's just run it. I always run it again just to see that we're not overly taxing our parameters. Okay, let's keep going. Keenum. All right, we're going to leave Keenum in there. Okay, let's set the Keenum stack up. Now, Keenum, really fun stack to make. Why? Because he's just got two wide receivers. There's no one else catching passes on that team. So, so it's Thomas and just Manny being Manny. Boom. Keenum's in there. Who else? Who do we forget? Andy Luck. Who's he throwing to? Right? Andrew Luck is throwing to T.Y. Hilton. He's throwing to Doyle. Maybe Ryan Grant. Maybe Eric Ebron. Maybe Marlon Mack. Okay, that's one. Now, who are they facing? Got us a luck stack in there. Don't do it twice, just once. Now, but he's also facing, let's see, week one. Maybe I want to make a game stack. So, how about stacking him with... AJ Green as well, or Green, or Eifert. Actually, who's their running back? Mixon. 
Actually, who's their running back when they're losing? Gio Bernard. But Mixon works too. So let's just leave Mixon in there. So again, we can make these decisions. And that rule. Run it. Still doing all right. Now, who's it choosing? Still using a lot of Case Keenum. We should be seeing a lot of, yeah, Sanders and Demarius Thomas because Keenum is the quarterback that's popping the most. Okay. Now, Keenum too much. I'm going to want to lower his projection down a little bit. He's at particularly high value. Run it again. Let's see a player showing too much. One of the one of the moves is we just lower their projection. Want a better mix. We saw some other quarterbacks to do, but I just kind of want to get this a little bit more in line. You can also set a max exposure. There we go. Who do we still have to do? Philip Rivers. Okay, Rivers. Another easy one, week one. I love Rivers, week one. Why? Because it's pretty obvious what he's going to do with the, with the football. Gordon doesn't really run for touchdowns, but they throw to him for touchdowns. We got Keenan Allen. Those are the big dogs for Philip Rivers. He's in there. Let's set up a game stack. So they're playing against the Chiefs. Let's put in Hunt and Ty Freak as part of the game stack. We got Luck. We got Rivers. We got Keenum. We got Watson. We got Breeze. We got Garoppolo. Who else is left? Man, I might actually use these lineups um, for my personal work this week. All right, here we go. Breeze, Watson, R Cousins, River, Luck, Garoppolo. That's everyone, I think. All right, and Keenum. So let's let's run it. Let's see what happens here. And we'll start to I'm going to start to show you how to manipulate this and make sure it's it's doing what you want it to do. Now, right now, we're getting the most exposure to Deshaun Watson and lineups involving stacks revolving around Deshaun Watson. And it makes a lot of sense because Hogan Rex Burkhead are considered outsized values week one. Now, this is just the beginning. There's so much more to it. It really does... It's an art to set these up for the main slate, and it does take some time. So let's look at some other some other um, things that we can be doing here. Defense. We want to control which defenses are being used. So let's take a look at the defense position real quick. I'm going to close this one so it's not in my way. And I'm just going to take a look at these defenses and see which ones do we want to use. Okay, so here we go. Ravens versus Buffalo. Hell yeah. I'm going to use them 30%. Surprise that projection. Okay, let's raise up the projection a little bit. This should be the best projected stack of the, of the week. Buffalo's terrible. Jaguars at the Giants. Uh, road team. I don't really use road, use road defenses. And for the purpose of this, I love the Saints. So let's set them at 10. Um, Vikings at home. Not in love with it. Steelers at Cleveland. Yes. 
Um, Broncos, definitely. Panthers, yes. I'm going to start pulling the rest of these guys. I don't like any of these. Tennessee on the road. Chargers at home. Eh, yeah, I'm going to leave them in there. Uh, Redskins, no. Bengals, no. Giants, no. Cardinals, no. Patriots, no. Dolphins, no. Colts, Chiefs, Cowboys, hell no. 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 So how many defenses are we left with? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Already starting to winning. All right, let's run the tool again. Let's see which defenses are popping up. This is how you set your exposures. You don't just do it. You have to set them up one at a time. Chargers. Chargers is not a defense I'm excited about. I don't know why the projection is so darn high. I'm going to lower it, first of all. And I'm going to set their max to 15%. Let's do this again. Okay. Saints, Ravens, Chargers, Steals. Everybody's coming in. I'm seeing, all right, I'm getting, maybe I'm getting a little more. I like the Saints very much. Ryan Fitzpatrick, an interception machine. I don't mind this mix, but let's say I say, well, I don't really want... 44% Saints. One defense, 44% is too much for me. I'm going to go Saints. I'm going to reduce it. Let's run it again. Got them down to 20%. Now who's popping? Ravens, Steelers, Panthers, Chargers. Those are my Saints around 20%. Now you might say, well, Steelers on the road. Um, Cleveland looks real good in hard knocks. Reduce that a little bit. Let's go to 10% with these guys. Let the tool do the rest of the work. There we go. Defense. Now we're getting a nice mix of the teams that we want. Panthers. You like the Panthers. Whatever. I do like the Panthers. All right. Now we're looking at the tight end position. Let's start checking these numbers out. Doyle's popping up a lot because he's stacked with... He's got a decent projection, and he's stacked with Andrew Luck. Reed is showing up a ton because he is the primary value play of Week 1. But let's say I want some other some exposures to other tight ends. And, and by the way, you have the ability here to allow or disallow any players from your flex position. I leave them all enabled, but you can pull them off if you want. If I don't want any running backs as a flex, if I don't want tight ends, if I don't want wide receivers, I can uncheck this button right below the filter and remove them. So on and so forth. Every position can be controlled. You notice that Odell Beckham is showing up everywhere. That's because his salary is traditionally low compared to what he does as a player. The issue is this is a tough matchup, whereas he's showing up 100%. I don't want no 100%. Odell Beckham week one, I would like 10% exposure at most. There are other stud wide receivers I like more, as I said in my wide receiver. Um, preview now you pulled out Odell look who's popping the next guy Antonio Brown that's how this stuff works now 52% Brown I'm going to spend all my money on the wide receiver position I don't think so not on the road let's go 15% Antonio Brown let's see what happens next what's going to happen is it's going to start spending money in other spots Looking at my mix, Zeke Elliott, not a great matchup. i make sure you're looking at running back position now. All right, so Elliott, not a guy I want to go crazy with on week one. That's going to set him to 15%. He was at 75. Burkhead's going to pop more. Barkley's going to pop more. See, the other thing we can do is raise up projections of players that we just want. So let's say I want, I'm not seeing David Johnson. Well, let's, let's raise him up. Okay. Kamara is the chalk week one, and yet he's not showing up enough here. Let's show, let's get him to 20.5. Okay. I think these numbers are very basic. They're not really designed to be the week one matchup so much as they are maybe what the average points for these players were last year. I don't know. But either way, you control it. Set up how much you want. When you see a player popping up too much, got too much Zeke, pull him out. Set a max limit on him. 
That's how you do it, one at a time. Let's run it again. Now we're rolling. All right, who's popping? Burkhead. Now Kamara, you're getting, oh, there you go. A little Kamara. So you're getting the proper amounts. You're getting a little more David Johnson. A little better mix. Okay, if I didn't want 96% Dalvin Cook, let's set him to no more than 45%. Other players will start to show up. One position group at a time. Control everything. Tight end, that's a lot of Jack Doyle, just Jack. I mean, not super excited about Doyle week one. <laughs> There's no way I'm rolling him out at 40% or anywhere near that. All right, so let's set him for 10%. Keep going, run it again. You know what happens when you do it? It only takes Reed. Well, I don't want one player. I do love Reed week one. As long as this guy's healthy, he's gonna be a beast. But 35% It's plenty of exposure in this type of um, entry. And again, we're designing this to be 150 entries to go into 150 entry max contests, be it the FanDuel ones, the DraftKings, they all have them. And there you have it. That's a baseline of just kind of how to work this. Um, I spend many hours setting up my lineups, messing with this, adjusting my exposures, um, I, I feel like I'm usually doing it right up until the last minute. I see players starting to pop up. I don't want, I do want, I set, I raise the max, I lower the max. We control everything. I don't want 70% of any one player, especially not one playing at San Francisco. So we set a limitation on the max exposure and you won't see him at 75% anymore. Manny Sanders, I love you, man. Sterling Shepard, I'm sure you're a nice guy, but Hell no, not 54%. Sterling. Now, if I'm doing this for the main slate, I use my Geeks Picks sheet, where I've already narrowed down the player pools to, to really initially set up my player pool. I haven't done that yet this year, which is why I'm kind of working this manual or, or just off the top of my head and kind of on, on, on the fly. More to give an idea of how you set this thing up than actually what I would want to do in week one. Again, these, these are not the real projections for week one. This is just for example. Evans showing up way too much. I don't like him. Get him out of there. And this is how you do it, one player at a time. That's the biggest, I, I think one of the biggest points I want to bring through is to make sure you're setting up a stack for every single quarterback position. You can run 150. We can do them by name, so we no longer have to just do these generic QB, WR1 type stacks. We're going to specifically set up stacks by player name. by Now, maybe you don't want to do that. Some people have told me lately, I don't have time for all this crap. I just want to run it. Okay. Okay. You can do that. QB, no less than one player of WR from same team. That's not hard. Every quarterback's going to be stacked now with a wide receiver from his team. You don't have to say names. It's too hard. How about from opposing team? Every lineup is stacked with a game stack. Same team, opposing team. Let's check it. Garoppolo, Goodwin, Diggs. McKinnon, Cook, massive game stack, good times. Garoppolo, I mean, every one of them is going to be this way. Cousins, Reed, Cook, game stack, Diggs. We're all stacked up. These are Hayden Hurst, 56%. That's crazy. Um, these are these are lineups designed and constructed in a way that we found is how you win tournaments. We know 
One thing's for certain in a tournament, you're not winning a tournament if every player in your lineup doesn't go off. We use that information, that knowledge, that certainty. Every player has to have an above average game. We use that certainty to construct the lineups in such a way that we're playing off the different position groups that would benefit from each other having a good game. Garoppolo is going to benefit his wide receivers, maybe his running back, maybe the opposing team wide receivers. That's what we're trying to do, get correlated lineups. We don't worry about the total projection when we're building stacked lineups. Instead, we're looking about the total correlation. And oh, by the way, we have a correlation tool coming this season in DFS Army that's going to be freaking mind-blowing. We'll have the numbers. It's going to be exact. We're going to have a science out of this. We're going to look at the highest correlated lineups. We're going to have articles about it. It's going to be everything that we talk about. Our coaches will be discussing which stacks to use. So you don't have to figure this stuff out on your own. We'll have breakdowns, which are the best stacks, which teams to game stack, which teams are sneaky, all of that good stuff coming up this season. I really hope this helped. I uh, did my best to try to kind of show this all and give an idea of my process of putting lineups together. Again, one position at a time, one player at a time, setting max exposures, making sure I'm not overly exposed or too underexposed to any one player I really want. As I find, if I want more of a player, I can raise his projection. If I want less of a player, I can lower it right here on the screen. Not a problem. We'll know. Uh, I just want to point out a couple other cool things that we have going on. Um, projected ownership will be showing on the domination station for the main slates. So you'll be able to get an idea of who the chalk is. And obviously all of these fields will be filled in when we get closer to the regular season. So that's it for now. Guys, thanks for being with me. This was a, a long one. This is supposed to be an instructional video, how to use the domination station. We've been crushing NFL for years in the DFS Army. These tools get better every year. We've made our improvements. There are still some things that are being added to it. Nothing, nothing functionally though. This is for, this is pretty much the same system we worked with last season outside of having some extra information on screen, like the projected ownerships. And of course, some of our internal uh, DFS Army stuff, like the correlations. But for the most part, this, this is uh, year two. We've had incredible success with this. And part of the thing is people, some people figure it out and some people don't. So that's the idea of this video. I want you guys to understand how to use this. It's a little bit different when you're doing a two game slate. You kind of have to work things slightly differently. You have to work your exposures, but it's also easier on a two game slate because there's, you could pretty much be aware of every single player. Whereas here, you really can't have exposure to everyone. So you really want to work with our advice myself will have all of our coaches kind of doing different breakdowns of how to set your domination station up for success again my name is kevin fantasy football geek if you're not already a dfs army vip member i mean now is the time we have a special promo going ahead of the season use promo code geek that's me geek when you sign up, you'll get 10% off your monthly subscription. We have two plans going right now. One is called DFS Army Lite, where you just get to use our tools, Domination Station. You'll get all of our podcasts and premium articles. What you don't get is our team Slack forums, our coaches' notes ahead of each um, uh, slate, uh, our, the ability to ask actual DFS pros questions and get answers. We're always around. We're always answering questions. Be quite honest, the VIP, the Slack version, that's why people like DFS Army. That's why we're the fastest growing um, daily fantasy sports team in existence. That is why we produce more winners, big winners than any other site. Don't believe me? Just watch. Check out the DFS Army wall of wins. I'm talking about 100,000, 100,000, 10,000. 10,000, 100,000. This is all in the last few weeks. 100,000, 10,000, 20,000. These are all winners from the last few 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 months. 100,000 and 5,000. Good job. Good job, Paul Dean. Um, 12,000, 20,000. That's a lot of BV. Seventy-five thousand.
domination of the leaderboard. 5,000. It goes on and on. This is just the past few months. There's a reason we produce winners at this level. It's my boy. And that's because 100,000, Super Splash Bro, PGA, every sport, it's because we're teaching you the technique that the pros use to enter these contests and to win them. That is what we do with our VIP members. We're teaching the techniques, the correct approaches to attacking the various tournament types. The results are right here. It's different from other sites that are just tools. I'm not going to say any names. There's a lot of sites that just give you cool tools, good tools, don't know how to use them, too complicated. There's sites that give you just models. Great stuff if you're a pro, need a little extra something. No one does what we do. It's a full service DFS site. We've got the tools. We've got the coaching. We've got the combo. And it does produce results. Anyway, thanks, guys. My name's Kevin. I will see you back closer to the season as I release my actual Geeks Picks sheets where I'll cover all of the players in my pool for that week and who and why and what type of contests and you know all the primetime podcasts and everything. We've got a ton coming out, so we'll see you then.